После общения с ними он написал, «Я должен быть ближе к тебе, Иисус, в стране, где христианская вера безжалостно подавлялась вот уже полвека». 20... Good evening to everyone who is listening us tonight, who is watching us on Facebook. Finally, uh, Radio Life is on the health wave. We really apologize for the technical difficulties that we just experienced, but we are with you. I'm your host, Victoria Boraev, and the health wave is here with you. Hope you had a nice week since last Thursday. And tonight we're going to have some uh, um, very nice practical lesson um, that I think you will like and enjoy a lot. The phone number in the studio is 770-727-0777. You can call us with a question or you can write to us on our Facebook page um, or on our website, radiolife.online. Um, so what are we talking about tonight? Mm, but I'm very excited, by the way, so I can't uh, even take a deep breath about it. The topic is very interesting, but before we start, I'd like to say that from now on, I'm going to try to um, break down the program into three sections. Um, one section is going to be called the health topics. The other section will be the food matters. We'll discuss questions about different foods, maybe some recipes and some uh, health properties of uh, different foods that people are asking about. And the last section will be um, with questions, questions and answers called You Asked. Uh, many people ask questions, so we decided to incorporate this into our program. And um, now let's get closer to our topic. As you probably saw in the announcement, we're discussing um, the question of how to read food labels. Um, a very important skill that many people don't even have. But why do we need this skill? The, the question comes first, in the first place. Because we no longer go shopping for simple, fresh foods like rice and lentils or beans and uh, we don't even know the difference between red beans and white beans how they taste we don't even know the difference between lentils and beans some people think that lentils are whole grains you know because we're losing this sense of uh, whole foods natural truly organic whole foods that are given to us by the earth um, so we don't we can't be satisfied with the simple ingredients like fruits and vegetables we want something ready to eat, something that doesn't require a lot of effort, something that's already washed, cut, uh, measured, packaged, cooked, and presented to us with the least amount of effort that we have to apply on our part. We want it fresh, and we want it healthy, and we want it packaged and, and ready to go. Therefore, the next problem comes with it because everything has a front and a back on one hand we were getting these ready-made foods and the market provided for us we go to the store and we can pick anything we want you know, of different brands with different varieties just choose what you like better but how to choose from it is the problem because all of these labels and all of this um health statements are screaming at us they're calling our name and you know one package looks more attractive than the other and you don't know what to pick from all of this variety so what do you do you flip the box and you see a lot of numbers and percentages and you don't know what to do with it how to read it or should you even bother about doing that so um what can you do about it Okay, the first thing that comes on mind, you just go and Google. We Google, uh, we use Google for everything. So you Google 
and the best place to go to would be probably something um, more reliable uh, like FDA, right? Why just not go straight to the FDA and see what they say about reading the nutrition label? And you go s uh, search for FDA website and it tells you that reading a nutrition label is easy and it's meant to be to help you learn how nutritious the food is or how it's not so nutritious so it's supposed to be helpful to us therefore FDA tells you it's very easy to read a nutrition label just follow the numbers look at the percentages and um, see if anything is below 5% then it's low in this nutrient if anything that is between 10 and 20 percent that is a good source of something right so then you go and and see if it's 20 percent and more that product is rich in something in certain nutrient and that's it this is how you decide okay so you decide okay i'm gonna go shopping let's go shopping to, together and before we start doing that i suggest that you grab something uh, that you have some package or a bottle or a um, product or a box and we can do it together Okay, so you're coming to the store and What I did I went straight to the health food section and picked out something healthy That we everybody likes including children that would be cashew milk many people like that enjoy it and so nutritious so you take it you look at the box looks great so delicious dairy free this is what you see first then you see soy free looks good so far cashew milk beverage unsweetened only 40 calories per serving good source of calcium sounds very good right okay so what do you do next you flip the box and you see this long nutrition facts label and now you know how to read it because you just checked it out on the FDA website and you look at this all these numbers okay so it has some numbers first you see uh, it has a serving size okay nice then you see calories 40 you just saw it has 40 calories per serving I guess it's good because it sounds low right then you go further down total fat and you see six percent I guess it's good because it's close to five percent so it's close to the low number so it's less fat so far looks good then you scroll down you see zero sugars sounds really good then you see all these vitamins and minerals vitamin C vitamin A vitamin D vitamin B12 zinc selenium magnesium gosh it looks so good <laughs> then you go down and look at the ingredients and you know because somebody already told you that the less amount of ingredients that appears on the label the better so the less the better everybody knows that so you see um, just maybe three five lines of ingredients with cashew milk to be as the first one doesn't look that bad just a few ingredients all right are you buying this looks good we're buying it not so fast I would like to offer you to go by a different system actually and the system is offered by um, a well-known registered dietitian Jeff Novick and this is what Jeff offers Jeff says that you can read a nutrition label in a few easy steps and I'm going to show you right now how to read this cashew milk beverage nutrition facts and be a completely sure whether you're buying it or not okay so number one what Jeff Novick offers is what he says rule number one do not believe anything that uh, that you see on the front label well um, it is soy free we know that it's cashew milk it's dairy free we know that and it's a good source of calcium and it's only 40 calories per serving how can it be wrong so let's look at the nutrition facts label again so the first line you see it says serving size one cup you always want to find out what the serving size is 
so that you know how much to drink or to eat. Then you see servings per container, four. Okay, nice. Why do you want to know how many servings there are per container? Right? In case you decide to eat the whole container or drink the whole container. <laughs> so that would mean that the rest of the numbers that you will see below have to be multiplied by the amount of servings you just had. So one serving is one cup. Amount per servings four scroll down you see calories per serving is 40 and then you see another line right next to it calories from fat calories from fat 35 and this is what you do at this point you have to that's the next rule you have to check calories from fat against calories always just because all the health directives tells us to do so to ch uh, check calories from fat uh, against calories so that we consume a low fat type of foods and the optimal health um, uh, the optimal health number acceptable number would be 20% or below so if the product is 20% or below in calories from fat then it's acceptable so we divide 35 by 40, this is how you do that, divide the number of calories from fat by the number of calories, 35 divided by 40, and the number you get is 87 or 89, 89%, it's 87, not that much of a difference, 87% calories from fat, what does it tell you, is it even any close to 20%? No. So then you scroll down, you see total fat, and next to it you can see 6%. So the FDA tells you the total fat of this product is 6%. Can you trust this percentage? No, you cannot. Um, and just overall, if you look down, you see um, this percentages that are listed here 6%, 0%, 0%, 0.4%, sodium and just just don't even pay any attention to that because those numbers are not that accurate and they're not and they're not healthy either. They don't uh, tell you um, <coughs> what the food should be to qualify for a health food. But the more accurate would be to to check calories from fat against calories. So now we know it's 87% fat. Then the next thing you want to do, you want to check sodium against calories. You scroll down, you skip all the fat, saturated fat, trans fat. You can see all this in the ingredients. So you scroll down and see sodium. And the correct amount of, of sodium should be the number in milligrams against the number in calories. So we see sodium 105 milligrams. Is it even any close to 40 calories per serving? No, it's, it's much, much, much more. So it's very high in sodium and very high in fat. Now looking down, sugar's zero. Okay, so this is good. But then let's skip all of the vitamins and go down to the ingredients. You see cashew milk as a first ingredient, filtered water and cashews. Then the next ingredient is canola oil. And then lots of other things that, you know, some, some of them you can't even pronounce. Some gums and, and phosphates and then selenium and some additives and vitamins. Yes, <coughs> but canola oil is one of the main ingredients. <coughs> you don't have to worry about sugars because sugars you can also see in the ingredient list. This is how you check your label. Let's go over it again. Serving size, servings per container, calories, and then calories from fat. We're checking against calories, right? And how we do that? We divide the number of calories from fat by the calories um, per serving. Then we're skipping fat and we're checking sodium against calories, sodium in milligrams, not in percentages. And then we go down and check skip the carbohydrates and just go to the ingredient list and what you want to see in the ingredient list is if the product has any added sugars like syrups like 
multi-talk, xylitol, and so on, ending with OL, or something like high fructose corn syrup or um, fructose, things like that, added syrups, also are not desirable, or at least you want them to be the last ingredients at the bottom okay so you don't want them to be in the first top three to five ingredients and this is measured by weight the ingredient list and then <clears throat> total sugars you want to be less than five percent five percent or less you see here sugars are zero but it's loaded with fat and sodium do you want to buy this product no i would not want to buy this product it's really like drinking uh, almost full cup of you you fill up your cup right but it's like three-fourths of a cup is oil or fat in this okay so this product doesn't pass my test all right let's go further what do we buy what do we usually look for when we go to the boxed section number one thing we start in the morning is we eat breakfast right and usually we don't have time and we go for something that's quick and fast and easy something like cereal boxed cereal if you can't see me on facebook right now you can probably hear me well on uh, the radio alive dot online and you can picture grab your favorite cereal box and check with me so i'm looking at this box i just randomly picked something from the shelf something that children usually enjoy and it's called cinnamon toast crunch mm, with real cinnamon all right so it says no high fructose corn syrup no color from artificial sources no artificial flavors crispy sweetened whole wheat and rice cereal sounds so good all right so let's read the nutrition facts label now we know how to do that because we just got some education nutrition facts serving size three-fourths of a cup do you think you can be satisfied with just three-fourths of a cup do you think it's not that hard to go overboard and have double like one and a half cup nothing wrong with it anyone can do it easily Servings, servings per container about 11 but i would assume that anyone could easily do cup and a half of breakfast cereal right so now checking further calories 130 per serving calories from fat 30. what do we do then we divide calories from fat by the number of calories per serving so we divide divide 30 by 130 and we get 0.23 then we time it by 100% to get the, a percentage. 23%, which is slightly higher than we would want it to see, uh, like 20%. So it's a little high in fat. Okay, let's go down. Uh, total fat, 5%. Can you believe that? <laughs> so we're not going to believe that. We're not looking at the saturated fat, trans fat, and all this. Scrolling down to sodium. 180 milligrams we're checking against 130 calories per serving and it's high in sodium because it doesn't even match to 130 it's by about uh, 50 points higher all right so scrolling down sugars 9 grams checking against calories 6.9 almost 7 percent so it's not that low in sugar not that bad but not that low and then again we see the, this whole long list of vitamins a c calcium iron d b and folic acid and all this sounds great and then we're looking down 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 scrolling down to the ingredients and here i'm going to have a blast whole grain wheat number one okay sounds good acceptable number two ingredient sugar number three ingredient rice flour we just checked it said crispy sweetened whole wheat and rice cereal it sounds like it has real rice in it but it doesn't and remember any packaged food wouldn't be um, whole food to begin with it's already processed so even the whole wheat that we get in here is not the whole wheat itself it's a byproduct it's a processed wheat already <coughs> even though it says whole wheat okay so rice flour 
The next thing is canola oil. We don't want any added fats in the products. And that's why it's higher in calories from fat, 23%. Then it has sweeteners, fructose on top of sugar that we already just read about, maltodextrin, dextrose, those are all forms of sugar. And then it has salt and cinnamon. And then it calls for something like trisodium phosphate. Do you know what trisodium phosphate is? No. Trisodium phosphate, <coughs> or TSP in short, it's a paint thinner used for commercial cleaning. So you don't know what trisodium uh, phosphate is and what do we do in this case? We Google it. The first thing that comes up <coughs> says, trisodium phosphate is commonly used as a food additive. It also functions as a decreasing agent, degreasing agent, a stain remover, and a general cleaning agent, also known by the names TSP E339, trisodium orthophosphate, or sodium phosphate. Trisodium phosphate is no longer used in consumer soaps and detergents because of ecological concerns. And you want to feed this to your children? You want to ask yourself. You want to think twice. Then it has BHT added to preserve freshness. Wait a minute. We just said that the box states no high fructose corn syrup and it has fructose, which is very close to that ingredient. No colors from artificial sources. It actually has paint thinner. <laughs> And then it says no artificial flavors. And we do see that the last ingredients, we do have artificial additives to this. Now, going back to the rule number one, do not believe anything that states on the front box, on the front label. Isn't it clear now? It's clear to me. So this product doesn't pass my test, doesn't pass Jeff Novick's test, and I'm not going to use it. But can you imagine if you used it on top of the fact that you're going to have a double serving, you're going to pour some cashew milk on it, pure straight fat. Does that qualify for a healthy breakfast? No, <laughs> no. And you're all frustrated. At this moment, your child comes to you and says, mom, somebody just gave me a healthy snack at school. Can you please buy it for me? So you think, all right, so now I know how to read food labels. Okay, son, give it to me. I'm going to read it and see what it says. So you flip over <coughs> the box or the package and you read the nutrition facts. It says serving size one package. Okay, great. So you're not going to overeat if you eat the whole package. The next thing you're checking calories, 100. Sounds great. And then you go calories from fat, 50. What do you do? You divide calories from fat by the amount of calories. And what you get is 50% fat, not even 20, not even 25 or 30. 50% fat, this snack that your child just is asking for. Then you look at the sodium, very low in sodium, fairly, uh, that's fair. Fiber, you want your kids to eat fiber to be a good mom, right? Or a good dad. And it says dietary fiber, two grams, very low in fiber. And then you look at the ingredient list. And the second ingredient you see is oil. It has only three ingredients. What do you think this would be? What kind of a product? Good guess. This is skinny popcorn. Skinny. The one that says 100 calories per bag. The one that says non-GMO, the one that says gluten-free, the one that says no artificial ingredients, the one that says free of tree nuts, the one that says dairy-free, peanut-free, preservative-free, no artificial colors, and zero trans fat, and with big letters it's screaming skinny. How can a product that is 50% fat, calories from fat, be called skinny? This is deceiving. This label is very deceiving. And we want to feed this, give this as a snack to our children, to school, to our kids. When one third of America nowadays, of American children are obese. 
one third of American children are obese. To be go a good parent, I would say no to my child very politely and I would encourage him to eat something from the category of fruits and vegetables. As simple as that. Okay, so now you're all frustrated about all these food labels. <laughs> And you decide, well, maybe I should just go back to the old-fashioned oatmeal. And you pick a box of the old-fashioned oatmeal that, you know, um, Quaker makes, uh, very popular. The one that says heart healthy, pretty good. Uh, banana and maple, nice flavor. Um, and of course, you want to read the nutrition label. Serving size, one packet. Calories, 160 per packet, per serving. Calories from fat, 25. So from this you can conclude 25 divided by 160, 15% fat. Not bad. So it actually passes the, the fat um, check mark. Then you check sodium. And sodium says 200 milligrams. Checking against 160 calories, you can easily tell that it's a little bit higher than you want in sodium. Sugar is 9 grams which makes it 5%. Not that bad. Then you look at the ingredients. Whole grain rolled oats, then sugar, then some natural flavors, then banana powder, and then you have some additives. Guar gum and some vitamins um, enriched with vitamins and then um, other enrichments. Not so bad, but still not 100% perfect sort of acceptable you can use it this is about the food label reading and um, I think I would encourage you to go to to the stores um, any local store that you have even Whole Foods even any any uh, health food store and start practicing reading food labels just remember you want to see the serving size you want to see the servings per container you want to check calories and then against calories you're checking calories from fat and sodium then all of the ingredients you want to make sure that they have whole grains not processed not flour less flour less processed grains um, and you want to see sugars to be either zero no sugars in the ingredients i mean added sugars i don't mean sugars from fruit naturally occurring but added sugars like syrups and and so on or at least see them below um, at the ingredients list as the almost last ingredients so this would be more or less acceptable so this was all for the health topics for tonight all right so let's move to the next topic the food matters and now we want to talk about something more positive at this point and this would be um what can you s actually are there any perfect boxes or packages that you can pick up to have um a hundred percent perfect nutrition label ingredients and so on and one of them that i wanted to show you tonight or to tell you more about is old bran old bran some of you are familiar with it, some not, but it's just a nice simple box of high fiber oat bran hot cereal. Again, we're looking for something that would be quick and easy for the breakfast, right? Um, we don't want to use box cereals like this anymore, um, but we want to use something like oat bran. And this is one of my favorites, actually. Oat bran is so easy and, and children love it because it only takes a minute or two to cook and it tastes like cream of wheat like this uh, nourishing and and comfort food that everybody likes creamy and hot and you can flavor it with anything you want and um, oat bran it's it's not exactly like oats because oats are a little bit different in texture they take a little longer to cook and oat bran is the um, outer layer of the oats themselves basically the outer layer or fiber in other words just pure fiber um, that has all of the vitamins it's a lot more nutritious in terms of um, vitamins and minerals versus oat and it has a lot more fiber in it which is great um, 
what do you want to do? You want to look at the nutrition label again, and it says um, serving size one third of a cup. And it's actually pretty accurate that all you need is just one third of a cup because old bran swells up a lot. It actually swells up. Um, it can absorb 25 times more moisture than, than the volume of the old bran itself. Um, that's why it's so wonderful. So it fills you up. It's much lower in calories than the oats, than rolled oats or still cut oats, which is great. Um, and then it doesn't take long to cook. So then you check um, calories 150, calories from fat 20, which makes it uh, below 20%. It's very low in, in fat nice and then you go to sodium zero milligrams this is what you're looking for this is exactly what you're looking for sugars zero and then you go to the ingredient list ingredient list says oat bran period just one ingredient does it pass my test does it pass jeff novick's test yes it does without doubt then um just to say a few words about oat bran Oat bran actually has a lot of health properties, and I want to name just four. Number one, remember, oat bran is very good for cardiovascular health because it's fiber, because it has, it has and uh, many people know that, that oats have soluble fibers, the type of fiber that helps to reduce cholesterol in the, in the bloodstream by two ways. Actually, it, it helps to excrete bad cholesterol ldl we know bad cholesterol called ldl so it helps to excrete that bad cholesterol out of the body through the liver by cleaning the blood vessels and at the same time it doesn't allow to absorb excess cholesterol from the other foods when you eat oat bran what can be better right so keeping your blood vessels clean that's why it's so good for the car cardiovascular disease then it's also good number two it's good for diabetes because it helps to keep your blood sugar stable it doesn't allow blood sugars carbohydrates to be absorbed into the bloodstream so fast and and raise the um blood sugar so it helps to slow down the digestion of carbohydrates which is very important and prevents it from entering the bloodstream so quickly therefore it helps to keep your blood sugar at a certain level for a period of time because we know that fiber and old bran is fiber basically pure fiber it helps to coat molecules of carbohydrates or sugar preventing it from the fast and easy absorption therefore it really helps with diabetes by keeping your blood sugar stable now number three old bran helps with weight loss and we just said that oat bran is a lot less, uh, has a lot uh, less cal amount of calories than oatmeal itself. You can do an experiment and um, by weight, you can just put on the scale five grams of oatmeal, like uh, rolled oats, let's say, or five grams of oat bran. And you can see that oat bran is so much lighter than on the scale, you'll have a lot bigger pile of oat bran rather than oatmeal plus consider the fact that oat bran swells a lot so you don't need much it absorbs all the moisture and then uh, fills you up so well that you don't feel hungry so it delays prolongs the sense of hunger actually delays the sense of hunger and and you don't get nervous you don't get mm, stressed about a, a diet let's say if you say if you're staying on a diet trying to keep a healthy diet so old bran is a, would be a very nice addition if you choose to lose weight um and number four number four health property as you probably can conclude because it's fiber it helps to prevent constipation many people have problem with that area and because oat bran is fiber it requires liquid of course anytime you consume fiber without taking enough liquids it actually can lead to constipation but in this case if because oat bran absorbs moisture if you consume enough water and you get hydrated properly and um, eat oat bran 
So that helps to prevent constipation, which is wonderful. So I would suggest to use oat bran for breakfast. Using something that helps with digestion, especially in the morning, is very important because it takes 24 hours for your stool to be formed for the next day, right? So making oat bran for breakfast as your hot cereal would be a perfect thing. You can um, flavor it with berries and nuts and banana if you want um, and things like that. Just flavor it however you want. It only takes one or two minutes to cook it. Again, just follow the package directions and it will tell you exactly what to do with it. Um, if you compare oat bran with oatmeal, again, 50% more fiber than in the oatmeal. A lot richer in things like calcium and iron all of the minerals and then b vitamins magnesium and and zinc which is great and then the structural difference also oatmeal um is more like rolled oats closer to a grain to a complete grain and oat bran is just the outer layer the fiber of that grain so structurally they are also different and then Another difference is that oat bran will makes makes you full much faster than oatmeal and keeps you full for much longer. Oh, I think I just sold you an oat bran. I hope <laughs> you guys are going to go and buy oat bran and make it tomorrow for your breakfast. This was it on the food matters. An ounce of prevention. An ounce of prevention is better than a pound of cure. Radio Life welcomes you to the Health Wave, where you can learn with us, meet interesting people, celebrate your health achievements, and find answers to your most bothering questions. We're back to the Health Wave, and um, the next topic is question answer that people ask a lot, um, and it's called, you asked. So you asked, what are, and you, you ask this question a lot, what are the ingredients that you, sh that you should stay away from when you look at the food label in the ingredient list? And it's actually, the answer wouldn't be that simple because you have to look for so many different things to, to know um, whether it's a good ingredient or not. And um, I would encourage you to take your time and do research more. If you don't know what the ingredient is, just take out your cell phone and Google it right away, right there on the spot. And this way, sooner or later, you'll, you'll learn uh, what's good, what's not. But generally, generally, we already mentioned that looking at the ingredients, you have to first of all see that the ingredient list is not that long. It shouldn't be that long. You want to see things like whole grains or whole beans, whole foods in the beginning of the ingredient list. This is very important. Not flour, not um, processed, broken down grains. And this would be more relevant to um, things like baked goods or, or pasta, macaroni and things like that. Um, usually you see a lot of flowers and even if you see flour you want it to say whole wheat flour rather than wheat flour right or rice flour rather um, brown rice flour rather than rice flour so those type of things you have to look for and then things like sugars and added sugars should be at the bottom of the list that's that's important and um, in general especially when it comes to buying baked goods number one thing you want to stay away from everything that says enriched or fortified and you often see that when you buy baked goods enriched or fortified just because everything is stripped off in the beginning to begin with and then it's added added nutri all of these added nutrients that fortify the product is not the best thing it looks good on the package on the label but it actually means that in the process of um, stripping and then enriching what happens um, there are they use chemically derived nutrients like formaldehydes and petroleum and it's not listed on the package it doesn't have to be so but but it's there it's present you know that these chemicals were used in the uh, 
in the process of making the product. So stay away from it. It's not a healthy statement when you see enriched or fortified. Then number two thing I would suggest, um, check for high fructose corn syrup, HFCS. High fructose corn syrup, this is not a good sweetener. This, it's actually a very cheap sugar derived from corn. But one problem exists here. And that problem is that most corn, if it doesn't say non-GMO or organic, mean, means that the, the corn was GMO, right? So all of the high fructose corn syrup, for the most, for the most part, I would say 100% of the time, is GMO product. So unfortunately, um, at this point, GMO products in the United States should not go on the label. We don't see it on the label. Only now, maybe so it's in some places, in some states, it's required to, to state that the product is GMO. Uh, however, widely, it's not accepted yet, and we won't even know that the product was genetically modified. So high fructose corn syrup is associated with a lot of health common health issues, including digestive distress, including cancer, including um, all kinds of um, liver problems, diabetes and tooth decay and hyperactivity. And I mean, the list is very long. One thing is um, something that you want to know if you don't know that high fructose corn syrup doesn't always, uh, doesn't always list itself as high fructose corn syrup on the label. It can be very sneaky and be called different names. For example, something like maize syrup, glucose syrup, fructose syrup, tapioca syrup. It could be uh, fruit fructose, crystalline fructose, dahlia syrup. All these different names actually mean simply high fructose corn syrup. Even if it's just simply fructose, you can never be sure 100 percent that there is no high fructose corn syrup in it so i would say stay away from high fructose corn syrup this is number two number three um monosodium glutamate that is called for short msg many people have heard of msg so what is msg MSG is a flavor enhancer. It's added to the foods and oftentimes in restaurants to enhance the flavor so that you eat and you have this wonderful mm, flavor in your mouth that you want to go back and buy this food again. So it makes you more addicted to this food. So therefore, monosodium glutamate is used in order to increase the sales of that product. And people get truly addicted to this uh, item. And we, I mean, you never know that it's there. What it's bad, uh, what, what's so bad about monosodium glutamate? Um, it's actually, it has to do with uh, creating blood brain barriers, especially in children whose brains are not so developed. So what it does, it actually damages uh, our neurological system. That's, what, that's why monosodium glutamate is so dangerous. And then you also need to know that in this country, the fact that it's so toxic only makes it worse. That in this country, monosodium glutamate is not required to be listed on the label unless you have 79% of it present in that product. So if it's 79% or above, then it's going to say MSG. Um, if it's less, 78%, you will never know that there is MSG on the, in the product. It will never say on the label, unfortunately. And, and on top of it, um, MSG is not always listed as MSG on the label. It also has all these different sneaky names, like, uh, listen to this, for example, glutamate, glutamic acid, monosodium glutamate, magnesium glutamate, Natrium glutamate, gelatin, calcium caseinate, sodium caseinate, textured protein, by the way, hydrolyzed protein. So anything that says with the word hydrolyzed has monosodium glutamate in it. So all these things like that, yeast nutrient, yeast extract has it, yeast food, um, and, and, and on and on. 
I just gave you quite a few names, about 10 of them, <laughs> to look out for, to make sure that, um, you know, you can be sure, assured when you see these names, when you read them, again, glutamate, glutamic acid, monosodium glutamate, and all these glutamates and hydrolyzed anything has monosodium glutamate in it or, or monosodium, yeah, MSG in other words. So stay away from this ingredient. And then another ingredient I want to call your attention for would be number four, hydrogenated oils. So those are um, oils that created, liquid oils that created the way that they can become solid at room temperature, you know, to prolong the life shelf of the product. And um, those things are very dangerous for our health, carcinogenic and, you, you know, contribute to the cardiovascular disease simply because they do not absorb into your system. They do not get digested. They clog your blood vessels. And um, fully hydrogenate, uh, hydrogenated oils may not contain trans fats, you know, um, or they may contain trans fat more, um, more than anything. They probably do. Um, there could be partially hydrogenated oils also. So you find them in margarines and, you know, other um, hard fats. So you want to stay away from this type of fats. And even if it says no trans fat, it doesn't really mean that there is no trans fat. And you know why? Because in the United States, if it has less than half a gram of trans fat, it doesn't have to be listed. But remember again, oftentimes what do we do? We pick up a product and we see it says fat free, zero trans fat. Let's say if it's oil, right? Oil spray. So you, you think, okay, so it's fat free. You don't pay it any attention at the serving size and you just go pshh, and you spray your skillet all over the skillet you probably get 10 servings out, out of it and guess what in this case trans fats add up and you do get them into your system even though they're not listed as trans fats on the on the food label so have to be very very careful on this note i'd like to conclude tonight's um topic i think it was very um very informational <laughs> and very powerful i'd like to uh, leave you with this note to pay attention and go practice and read nutrition labels because they can tell a lot about the food that you want to buy and i'd love to um, encourage you to buy foods that don't require nutrition labels foods like whole grains and and beans and fruits and vegetables fresh fresh dried it doesn't matter but something that's not in the box even if it requires time to cook remember your health worth it i want to leave you on this note and i uh, wish you to stay on the health wave and we'll see you next thursday at six o'clock hopefully without any technical difficulties good night be well An ounce of prevention is better than a pound of cure. Radio Life welcomes you to the Health Wave, where you can learn with us, meet interesting people, celebrate your health achievements, and find answers to your most bothering questions.